It's a dear great pleasure over here today to welcome Dr. Gorak Madhurka today. Uh, welcome to ASCG 2017 TV, sir. So, Dr. Gorak is the chairperson for medical disorders in pregnancy committee FOXI 2016 to 19. So, Dr. Gorak, uh, today would we'll be talking on a very innovative topic, a very new topic. So, Doctor, tell us about some new topic today, which you said that is hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. So, according to you, what is some important aspect of this topic? That you right. Uh, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy is not a new topic per se, though it is a new terminology. Okay. Actually, since decades together, this is the biggest problem when the uh, maternal mortality and maternal morbidity is concerned. Initially it was called as a toxemia of the pregnancy, then it was named as a, a preeclampsia. Then nowadays it is called as hypertensive disorders in pregnancy and it covers right from chronic hypertension in pregnant women to eclampsia and the preeclamptic women then as well as uh, gestational hypertension then superimposed uh, hypertension with preeclampsia. All these terminologies they come under the hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Uh, classically, it is defined as any blood pressure more than 140-90 millimeters of mercury beyond 20 weeks of pregnancy, uh, and when it is taken four to six hours apart, then it is called as uh, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. So how, according to you, should the blood pressure be monitored in such patients? Uh, every every patient, when we see the blood pressure, then uh, many a times it is taken in superimposition or in uh, uh, other lateral positions, etc. But ideally, uh, the blood pressure should be taken in sitting position. That is very important. The blood pressure apparatus should be at the heart level of the patient. The cuff should be of a proper size depending upon the circumference of her arm patient should be relaxed and she should not have taken tea coffee or she should not have taken some nasal decongestant uh, likewise yeah. so it should be calm and in quiet sitting she should not be cross legged and all so that is the ideal way to take the correct blood pressure and it should be taken with mercury sphygmomanic Okay. So that is the ideal yes. sitting blood pressure is the main thing. So of course sir, as we can see that uh, antihypertensives do play a very important role for management of hypertension in pregnancy. So what according to you should be the timeline or a clinical point where antihypertensives could be started over there? Right. Though we are defining the high blood pressure as more than 140-90 mm of mercury, all guidelines, the SEOG guidelines, NICE guidelines, Indian guidelines, the good clinical practice recommendations of the FOXI, they all say that the antihypertensive should be started when the blood pressure crosses 150 systolic, more than or equal to 150 systolic, and more than or equal to 100 millimeters of mercury diastolic that means beyond 150 100 when you start the anti antihypertensive medicines. Of course. And any importance of maxal that you would like to uh, mention over here? In, uh, right. See, magnesium uh, sulfate is the molecule which is, uh, I can say, like a Okay. Because again, uh, initially it was thought that uh, the heptoid, that means the dilatin sodium or dizzy pound, they are the yeah. gold standards for the management of eclampsia. Yeah. Eclampsia is nothing but the tonic clonic convulsions yeah. in a patient of uh, hypertensive disorder. Yes. But subsequently, in so many years, it has been proved that magnesium sulfate usage is beyond doubt and it should be used in the management of eclampsia. Of course. Also, it has a very great role after uh, the very important trial that the, the magnesium sulfate must be used to prevent the convulsions or to prevent the eclampsia in all severe hypertensive patients. Okay. That means the patients who have pregnant patients who have blood pressure beyond 160 110 in all of them, the magnesium sulfate has to be used. Okay. And if you ask the regimen, okay. then uh, the WHO says or even Indian guidelines says preacher regimen is the best. Yeah. 
there are other highway regimes, but because of uh, lack of monitoring facilities, uh, it is better to use the pre-chart regime. Five gram uh, in each butter, so that is total ten. And four gram, I will be slowly as a twenty percent solution. So total fourteen gram is a loading dose, and then every six hours it has to be given as a five gram by looking patellar reflex, respiratory rate, uh, and the urine out. And then it can be given. So it is life saving, and every gynecologist must have at least twenty ampules of magnesium sulfate in her or his. Labor room, it's mandatory. Okay. That was a very wonderful insight uh, from uh, Dr. Gorak over here, and it was uh, indeed a very key message that needs to be taken care of in all uh, cases of hypertension and pregnancy. Thank you so much for being with well, us, Dr. Today, and uh, we would like to give you a guideline with me today over here, which is the latest guideline over here for venous thromboembolism and uh, ovarian hyperstimulation and pregnancy. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much. I must congratulate NQR. For doing such a good activity of giving key messages on important topics to all the gynecologists. Thank you so much.